In this presentation, we will take a look at some multiple choice questions related to cash and internal controls. First question, cash over short account A is needed when cash has a credit balance. balance. B is used to record errors with petty cash. cash. C is not necessary in a computerized accounting system. Bet? System? Betting system? D can never have a debit balance or E can never have a credit balance. Check balance. So we'll go through this one more time and then we'll see if we can cross some of the items out with the process of elimination. Cash over short account A is needed when cash has a credit balance. So the cash over short, if we think about it before we go through this, we probably want to give a quick think of what it is. Uh, we're really recording cash over short when we're recording a process where we have the cash uh, register receipts, uh, recording how much cash we should have gotten in terms of cash sales, and, uh, the, and then we're having the physical count of cash. And typically if those things don't line up, then we're going to have to record the difference somewhere, and we typically record that to the cash over short account. So it's needed when the cash has a credit balance, uh, not necessarily uh, the case here, because um, cash typically won't have a credit balance. We might credit cash, but it won't have a credit balance. So that's not it. B says is used to record errors with petty cash. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing here. So because we are saying the cash is different for the physical count to what the register says. So we'll keep that for now. C says is not necessary in a computerized accounting system. Uh, you might think that, but really, we, even if we're using a computerized accounting system, it will be there. Even if we have the register and all the and all the r recording being done real time, we still have to physically count the cash, and it may be off from what the register says. So it's not C. D says can never have a debit balance, uh, and I'm just going to read E too. E says can never have a credit balance. So those two, when we have two things that are totally the same except for that one word, debit or credit, we might think well. Either these two are eliminate each other, or um, it's one of those two being differenced by that one word. So these two, you, know, you kind of might uh, get hung, hung up on that one, uh, because oftentimes when we have two things that are just all totally the same, but only have one word difference in a multiple choice series, a lot of times that'll be one of those will be the correct answer, that different word being the difference. But in this case, um, can never have a debit balance or a credit balance are both actually wrong because the cash over short could have a debit or credit. And that's the weird thing about the cash over short account. It doesn't have a normal type balance like most accounts do because it can flip to the debit side or credit side depending on whether the cash is over or short from uh, what we said would report in the cash sales on the register. So it's actually not either of those. And that leaves us with B here. So the question and answer, cash over and short account B Use, is used to record errors with petty cash. So that's what we're doing here. The, re, the sales receipt is showing something different than the cash collected and therefore we have to record that difference. That means an error has happened somewhere, either with the reporting or with the cash collection. Next question. When reimbursing the petty cash fund, A, cash is debited, B, expenses are credited, C, petty cash is debited, D, no expenses are recorded, or E, expense accounts are debited. Once again, we'll read through it, see if we can cross some of these items off. When reimbursing the petty cash fund, A, cash is debited. Um, when we reimburse it, we're actually taking money out of the checking account, so cash would be credited, so it's not debit to cash. B, expenses are credited. And expenses, we could be doing something with expenses, but we know debit expenses typically because they are debit balance accounts and they, uh, they only go up within the debit direction. So we're not going to credit the expenses. Uh, if we do anything, we're going to debit expenses. So I'm going to cross that out. C, petty cash is debited. Now that, uh, you may think that would be the case because, uh, so I'm going to keep that for now. D, no expenses are recorded. And really this is the point in time that we do record the expenses. So it's not that. And E says expense accounts are debited. And if we do anything to the expense accounts, we would be debiting them because expenses typically go up in the debit direction. So we're left with C and E, which are petty cash is debited and expense accounts are debited. 
So let's read through this one more time. When reimbursing the petty cash fund, uh, C sounds really good. Petty cash is debited. And, and it's a bit deceiving because we would be replenishing the petty cash fund and you would think that we would debit petty cash and credit uh, the cash account. But that's kind of the tricky thing we do with this, um, with the petty cash to skip or reduce the number of journal entries. We can uh, just make a journal entry at the end of the time period which would debit all the expenses, which would be E, and then credit cash, not touching petty cash at all, meaning it still has like the original amount that we had put in there when we originally set up the petty cash fund. And then instead of uh, taking money, you know, recording all the receipts and reducing petty cash in a journal entry account and then reimbursing it again, we can really do just one step and eliminate the duplication of the process by just recording the expenses and then a credit to the uh, cash account. So E will be the correct answer, C actually not the one. So we're gonna have when reimbursing petty cash fund, E, expense accounts are debited. Next question. Procedures for verifying, approving, and recording obligations for eventual cash disbursements and for issuing checks for payment only of verified, approved, and recorded obligations is A, internal cash system, B, petty cash system, C, cash disbursement system, D, cash control system, or E, a voucher system. Let's go through this one more time. Procedures for verifying, approving, and recording obligations for eventual cash disbursements and for issuing checks for payment only of verified, approved, and recorded obligations is uh, internal cash system. Now, we, if it said internal control type system, uh, that would be more. That might be something applicable, but a internal cash system, I don't think, is correct. Petty cash system. Uh, this is, sounds like it's going to be dealing with the normal cash payments, not necessarily the petty cash, which is really just used for the the, some, the minor cash payments. So, probably not that. Um, C, cash disbursements system. Kind of sounds like we are dispersing cash in some way uh, or paying for things. So I'll keep that for now. And D says cash control system. Uh, there, it could be a type of control. And then E says the voucher system. So, uh, and that sounds kind of reasonable too. The voucher system is a type of internal control. So uh, over the payments of, of cash. So C, D, and E. Let's read through it one more time. Procedures for verifying, approving, and recording obligations for eventual cash disbursements and for issuing checks for payment only of verified, approved, and recorded obligations is either cash disbursement system, cash control system, or the voucher system. And of those three, it's actually the voucher system is going to be the correct answer. So voucher system uh, is going to be this, this is in essence the definition of the voucher system.